All right, welcome to Behind the Scenes. I'm BG Lisco filling in today for uh, Joe Danier, and we have Angie from All About the Pause here. Angie, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. So uh, give us a little bit of a background on All About the Pause and uh, how you became involved. All About the Pause is a local dog shelter in Austintown, Ohio. Um, we've pulled dogs from Mahoney County Pound, Trumbull County Pound, even at Mississippi, uh, Missouri, Texas. Um, we are 100% volunteer run and we run in shifts. We're always looking for volunteers. I've been there for nine or 10 years now. Uh, I go about two or three times a week. We have people that go every single day, very mm -hmm. dedicated volunteers. Um, very busy right now, We're very busy. A lot of dogs that need help. Mm -hmm. How many dogs do you guys have at any one given time? We try and keep it around 10 at our shelter. We can have up to 30 but about 20 of them will be in foster homes at the mm -hmm. time. So sometimes we've had up to 50. A lot of them were in foster homes or a lot of them were puppies, mm -hmm. but we, we do have a decent amount of dogs available with us. Yeah, I mean, uh, so how many dogs, I guess, over the years? I mean, uh, do, do you guys have, keep a count on how many you've kind of adopted out? Or it, I think it was always an intention for me to, like, kind of keep track. But Nancy, uh, the woman who runs the shelter, that – she has so much going on. Uh, I would say it's over a thousand, mm. probably more than that. Um, we do a lot of work. We do a lot of good work. I hate to boost my own uh, moves, but uh, I think I think we do a lot of stuff. Um, we, we even have some cats lately. Mm. We're moving a lot of kittens, so I could. I wish I could put a number on it. It's up there, though. The breeds of dogs. I mean, do you see kind of all types, or I mean, do you see specific ones? Do you see like you know more than others. Uh, majority of the time we see terrier mixes, mm -hmm. uh, pit bull mixes, but we've had English bulldogs, we've had French bulldogs, we've had German shepherds, we've had golden retrievers, we've had um, shih tzus, chihuahuas, we've had every breed that you can think of. Purebred dogs come into shelters as much as you don't want to think that they do. Mm -hmm. And they're all amazing, so. What kind of conditions uh, you, do, do you see these dogs like? Wh and what sort of conditions are you kind of taking them out of? We've seen conditions where they're just it's a very happy family and they just don't have the time because they're both working a lot of jobs um or too many kids and we've seen as much as they've been abandoned in a, an abandoned house for weeks mm -hmm. um we've seen dogs dragged behind cars we've seen dogs burned we've seen dogs starved we've seen every terrible thing you can think of and these dogs still have so much love to give. Mm -hmm. Like I, we, we have a dog, his name was Walter. One of the volunteers ended up adopting him because he was just so amazing. Um, came to us and he looked like he was just set on fire and let go. He had like no fur to him. He was all burns. The sweetest dog you would ever meet. Mm -hmm. Like you could not tell that a human being did that to him because he loved everyone he met. Mm -hmm. so we have a lot of awesome dogs that come through from the worst situations. Yeah, I mean, uh, are there any dogs that are that you know maybe are are, are are too far gone or that require, I guess, more kind of care to sort of bring them back to be adoptable? Yeah, um, I mean, we've had dogs that they needed a little bit more work, reached out to trainers or found rescues that were a little bit more specialized mm -hmm. in their care. Um, majority of the time, it just takes a little bit of love. You know, they just hang out at the shelter. We overwhelm them with love sometimes mm -hmm. uh i i don't know if when you came to visit if you saw like we really we really like our time with the dogs there um we try as much like we don't get a ton of time with them but mm -hmm. the little we do we try and let them know that they're cared for and someone wants to love them so what's sort of the application process because i know you guys you guys have one as far as uh if somebody wants to you know come check out the dogs or or adopt the dog but kind of describe that a little bit of what what folks have to go through uh you know kind of in order to you know yeah. uh, be eligible to uh, adopt so we have an application process obviously um you have to go on our website if you see any dogs that you're interested on our facebook or website or anything it's all about the pause.com pause with the z um if you like a dog, there's an application form on there, fill it out. It takes 10 minutes to do. I know it's a little aggravating when you're told you want to meet a dog and mm -hmm. he'll fill this out first, but we are volunteering our time. Everyone there is coming when they are able to. Mm -hmm. And we do need to make sure that the people that are coming are going to take care of the dog. So it's simple questions like, 
have you ever been accused of animal cruelty? Where mm. would you keep the dog um, when at night when you're gone? Simple things like that. Um, would your landlord allow you to have a dog? Because <laughs> uh, sometimes that's the thing. And well, we've had people adopt dogs and like, oh, my landlord said no. I'm like, didn't think this through. It's okay. We get it. So now we have to take um, as much as we can precautions be beforehand. Because mm. one, getting a dog out of the shelter in a home where he's happy and comfortable, and then he comes back to the shelter, really breaks their spirits. Mm -hmm. So we try to avoid that too. You fill out the application. Once your application is approved, which majority of the time it is, once it's approved, we'll call you, schedule a meet and greet uh, when the volunteers or any, you know, whenever any of us can get there to have you meet with your dog. Um, and if it goes well, we like to do a home check just because people lie. We hate yeah. to think it. And I mean, things have happened and it's just us making sure that our dog is in a home that is suitable. Cause sometimes mm. it, it might not be right. And it's not because you're a bad person. It's not because the dog's awful. It's just sometimes a dog needs a certain setup mm. and they require a fence because they've taken off before. Um, or there's too much commotion, like too many people in and out of the house. And this dog needs a lot of people or like, you know, to really decompress the first mm. few weeks at its home. So um, it's, it is a process but it's worth it in the long run. Our dogs come fully neutered, uh, spayed, neutered, all their shots taken care of, every vet issue that you could think of, we've, pr we've tried to uh, address before we adopt them out. That costs us money in the long run. Um, we try and keep our adoption fees like around 250. Mm -hmm. That's to cover the basic spay, yeah. neuter shots. We sometimes lose money on the adoption fee. We're not doing it to make money. It goes mm -hmm. right back into our vet bill, um, and it's always rolling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you guys have a fundraiser coming up too, right? Yeah. At Westside Bowl, mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you've got a, a got a show. Uh, talk a little about that, if you would. Um, we are doing our first annual. What's the word for that? Inaugural. Yeah, I think so. I can't say that very easily. So <laughs> first inaugural, annual yeah, works. <laughs> um, so we're doing our first annual um, pause fest, um, where we will be having. 11 bands for $10 at Westside Bowl, uh, Saturday, March 2nd. Mm -hmm. Doors open at 6, show starts at 7. Having bands every half hour, upstairs, downstairs. There's two stages, thankfully, at Westside Bowl. Every band that's playing is donating their set mm -hmm. to uh, for the dogs. And every dollar from that ticket money is going straight to the dogs at the shelter. Not one volunteer is making any money. I'm not taking any money from it. Nancy's not taking any money from it. It's going to the dogs. Mm -hmm. So... This episode was brought to you by Youngstown Computer, the Valley's technology company. We appreciate the loyalty and all you have shown us over the years, and it's our promise to serve all the technology needs of the Valley. Call 330-259-7278. We have both home and business services available. Everything from repair, installations, and new equipment. You can improve your Wi-Fi and have technology serve you better. Call 330-259-7278 or you can schedule your appointment right now on youngstowncomputer.com and look for the red book now button. Nice. And so, yeah, you guys have done some other fundraisers. I know there too. You've done like an emo night, yeah. uh, a couple other, couple other kind of, kind of get togethers, but it's always something kind of, kind of different, uh, kind of different and fun. So mm -hmm. kind of a different way to, uh, a different and cool way to raise money. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of, I love basket raffles. They do really well. Mm -hmm tired of them yeah. though <laughs> um i still attend them when i see somebody else putting one on I'm like i'm there uh but yeah emo nights they've been doing pretty well uh we normally have about 500 mm -hmm. i think the one we had about 600 people show up nice. um i'd love i'd love to be able to get it to like a thousand people but i'm not going to push my limits mm. on that uh, i just saw tropidelic sold out at, at uh west side bowl so i would love that would love that'd be a dream yeah our emo nights we have uh, a cover band play. My husband's in it, so I'm a little biased. A cover band. We have karaoke. We have an emo drag show, which is mm. one of my favorite parts of it. We have so much going on on those nights, and it's awesome because so, like the community pulls together. And sometimes I have to tell people, like, I'm sorry, we might have to look at next time mm. to be part of the show. And this is why we're doing the Pause Fest, because a lot of bands have wanted to play for us. And it was like, you know what? Let's move. Let's just compact this in and do an annual festival all the bands that are playing came to us or i might have went to them because i kind of you know want them my husband's band's playing so of course i'm gonna make him play but um 
yeah, it's it's really awesome to see everyone pull together for the dogs. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. Well, all right. Well, uh, we're gonna get some some video. Let's, well, let's yeah, absolutely. Well, let's meet some of these dogs. So, uh, so who's who is this here? Let's see. That is Claire. Um, Claire is a little pity mix, obviously. Um, right now, she has heartworm. We are getting her heartworm treatment. She can't play as much as we want her to, but she is pure love. I. I'm I'm in love with her. She's the sweetest thing. She was super sweet. I think yes. she might have been the sweetest one. I mean, they were all they were all pretty nice. No, but she was, but yeah, she, yeah. She's a heartbreaker for sure. I I'm really hope we can get her home soon because it's not it's not the best environment for a dog with heartworm, especially to uh, come in because it's a stressful place and mm-hmm. heartworm really isn't best for a stressful environment. Are most of the dogs like? Do you, are they, are most of them younger that you guys get in, like one to two? I mean, do you get some that are, that, that, does it vary or? I would say our average age there is two years old. I feel like every time I'm like, eh, I don't know this dog's age, it's safe to just say two years mm-hmm. old. Um, I would think she's probably around that, uh, if not three. Um, she's a mature little girl. She's got all her manners. Mm-hmm. She's so she keeps her kennel clean. I have no issues with her. And you guys ran into some some issues um, as well with, with as far as getting a lot of dogs kind of after the, the the pandemic too, right? Yeah, we've had a lot of return or not returns, but I would say we're having a lot of people realize that the um, dogs are a little bit more responsibility. And in 2020, when they had free time, uh, they didn't really work on separation anxiety uh, or training as well as they wanted to. And now we're dealing with a lot of people, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. realizing it's more than they can take. We got to get her out of the shelter, man. She would be so good. She'd be the best couch potato ever. (laughs) Yeah, hopefully this, uh, anybody watching out there, she's up, you know, (laughs) all these dogs you see are up for adoption. So, but but yeah, I I can't imagine her, uh, her hanging around there too, too long, you know what I mean, with, yeah. with the personality that she has. Yeah, she's very happy with staring deeply into your eyes <laughs> and telling you she loves you, <laughs> even though she just met you. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that, that's Alyssa. She just met Alyssa just then. She mm. was asking, like, is this, where'd she come from? Like, she's been here. <laughs> about how many volunteers do you guys have? Um, I think we have about 30 active volunteers. Um, it's, it, it's definitely a team effort. Some people um, come, like I said, come be every single day or at least five or six days a week. Mm-hmm. Um, most try and do one or two. We're there for about two hours at a time. We mm-hmm. walk the dogs, feed the dogs, play with the dogs. Um, I personally like playing with them because it's just so fun mm-hmm. seeing them like break <laughs> out of their shell. And that, <laughs> that's Mason. Uh, he came from Mahoney County Pound. He was a puppy there. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's he grew up basically in the shelter it feels like so we're really trying to get him a home before um that is sundance we are working on putting some weight on him he's he's a fun little guy he's doesn't want to be outside very much he's very happy in his kennel Mm -hmm. um he's smart he is really quick to learn some uh we, we were working on some training and i think he's he's happier with learning uh cues and stuff mm-hmm. yeah we're, we are definitely looking for a new building for our shelter unfortunately we're kind of running into the worst housing crisis building crisis uh real estate crisis yeah. it feels like <laughs> so we we don't have the most ideal place for our uh, dogs but mm-hmm. we're making it work uh and definitely keeping an eye out for something else out there if anyone has any leads please throw them at Mm. us we would love to move our dogs into a place that's not on a busy road because we're right off mahoning avenue um a place that has a better place i mean if you could see we have a weird field to walk the dogs in of a burned down restaurant (laughs) so um yeah we we make it work they definitely uh, it's better than what they could have mason would make such an awesome dog he's so smart his eyes might be pretty far apart, and it's because he's got a big brain, but mm-hmm. he's so sweet. Very happy with cuddling. Very loves to play. Very, very, I mean, he's still a puppy. He's, he might he might be a year old now. Mm-hmm. He comes in for plenty of close-ups here, and I think there's a spot <laughs> where he just, he just stops and just 
yes. bits and starts looking around. Yeah, <laughs> just, takes just, it all in. Checking out what's going on on, uh, <laughs> on Mahoning Avenue, it's, just kind of chilling. We've had some dogs that, like, they see they just don't like cars and they bark at the, <laughs> the cars driving past. I'm like, yep, oh, we're not walking this way anymore. <laughs> but he just sits down and just wants to, like, see everything going on. He's a great dog. Yeah, he's slowly becoming a, a volunteer favorite. There he kinda, is. Kinda, yeah, he's still going over this close up. <laughs> kind of speaking of that, I mean, how um, is it is it challenging? I, I mean, obviously you want to see all these dogs kind of get adopted, but I mean, is it challenging? I mean, do you get kind of connected connected to them? Does it get kind of sad to see them going a little bit in, in a way too? We all love seeing them get adopted, but we all want to say goodbye. So mm-hmm. like, there's days like if I know a dog's getting adopted – like within a day or so that I'm not going to be there. Um, I always try and like say my goodbyes, especially when it's a dog that I'm like very attached to. Mm-hmm. Um, we all had our shelter favorites. Um, we had Big Sam recently. He was with us for about a year. He got adopted and we were all like, we got to come by and say goodbye to him. And, you know, <laughs> I think he left with a bunch of gifts and everything. And um, we all try and keep tabs. We love getting updates from the dogs because it's one of those like it's, it's hard to see them go when you get an attachment to them. Like I consider them my temporary dogs whenever mm-hmm. they're in the shelter. Um, it's 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 worth it. Mm-hmm. You know, we've been doing this for I've been doing this for almost ten years. So a lot of the dogs that when I started are you know unfortunately they're getting old and you know passing away peacefully with their families and getting the updates and it's a little uh, kick to the gut. But you know it's like you're losing one of your own, but. This episode was brought to you by Youngstown Computer, the Valley's technology company. We appreciate the loyalty and all you have shown us over the years, and it's our promise to serve all the technology needs of the Valley. Call 330-259-7278. We have both home and business services available. Everything from repair, installations, and new equipment. You can improve your Wi-Fi and have technology serve you better. Call 330-259-7278, or you can schedule your appointment right now on youngstowncomputer.com and look for the red Book Now button. Um, this is Tanjiro. He is, he's so funny. <laughs> I love him. He just, he does the tippy taps when I'm giving him his food. Um, he's just, he's just so funny. I don't know how to explain it. Like, he makes me laugh all the time. Tail's always wagging. Mm. I've never seen him like upset about anything. Mm. He's just ready to go. He wants to play. He wants to go for a walk. He wants to eat. He loves food. Very food motivated. Um, he would be an awesome dog in a home. I think he would make someone so happy. Very strong. Would need someone who uh, can definitely handle him on the leash. I definitely struggle sometimes, but yeah, he's still got a little bit of puppy he's, energy. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, but he's he's a really good dog. I I love playing with him. I think he's a shelter favorite too. Like he doesn't he he has no boredom. Mm-hmm. He knows how to entertain himself. Like I'll um my favorite thing he does, I'll be like cleaning up I- inside and it gets quiet towards the end of our shift and uh I'll hear him chewing on a bone and he's like humming while he's doing it <laughs> and it makes me laugh. Like he's like you could tell he's just so happy. Mm-hmm. Like I got my bone, this is all I need. I'm happy. Yeah, he would do so good in a home. He's another lab mix. You know, like I said, a lot of the dogs we get are terrier mixes. He's probably a lab mix of some sort. As far as, like, you know, the the, the temperament of, of a lot of these dogs, I mean, because a lot of them are coming from difficult situations mm-hmm. and, and things like that. Um, I mean, how often do you see ones that kind of require maybe a little bit more care than others just in that, in that regard in sort of kind of snapping them out of that? situation that they were in or kind of getting them to, you know, to, to, to maybe trust a little more if they came out, if they came out of a bad situation? Um, sometimes it takes a while to even show, like, mm-hmm. you know, they're scared in the shelter and then when they start getting a little bit more confident, it's like, you know, they're a little bit more like, hey, I'm going to say what I, what I want. Um, it's not super often. Um, and sometimes it might even just be kennel situation like some dogs just don't do well in a shelter environment and mm-hmm. i mean i don't think i would if i was in that situation it's you're in a kennel like 23 22 hours a day you don't have really much we have radios and stuff for them playing all the day all the time we have toys um for them to play with that aren't going to potentially harm them because when they're bored sometimes things turn into food when they're not meant to be food mm-hmm. you know they always have things to kind of try and keep them entertained but 
unfortunately, we're all they have. So we definitely try and take advantage of that. Um, we, we, do, we do have dogs sometimes where it's just like, this is going to be next level. Um, mm-hmm. we might, he might need a little bit more attention than what we're able to give. And sometimes they're just not good for a shelter environment because they just kind of deteriorate, you mm-hmm. know? I couldn't imagine sitting in a cage that long. Um, so that's normally when we reach out. We have trainers that work with us on a regular basis. Kind of they'll take them in for a little bit and see what they can do to help them out. Mm-hmm. Um, this is Cornelius. I love him. Some uh, big head, meathead, <laughs> very fun dog. Um, he's he's another one of those dogs that doesn't know how strong he is. I don't think he really was given uh, much direction when he was growing up. So really good dog though. Got it. He's got a funny personality. I think if if he could tell jokes, he would tell some good ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got a beautiful color too. Oh, I love Brendels. Brendels are my weakness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he was in for plenty of close-ups, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he knows what personal space means. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> yeah, he likes to play with the other dogs in the in the shelter. Like, his kennel is right next to another dog, and we'll walk in. He's actually right next to um, Tanjiro. Mm-hmm. And we'll walk in, and they are just running up and down the the fence together, just mm-hmm. playing, having a good time, like – yeah they're they're good yeah he's dog friendly we're not sure about cats um we don't have cats in the shelter to really like see how Mm -hmm. they would do with cats um and i know that's like kind of a big issue for a lot of people most people a lot of people have cats you Mm -hmm. know and they want to know is this dog going to be good or bad and it's really hard for us to tell yeah i would think it'd be it'd be hard to put a cat in that situation too because with all those dogs the cat's gonna be like what is going on here yeah it's probably not the best gauge of whether or not they're gonna get along you're gonna need that sort of individualized experience i I would imagine a cat just yeah the instant hissing and stuff and i mean like (laughs) something hisses at me and i don't know what you are i'm probably gonna react poorly too so yeah it's uh definitely not the best situation to see like sometimes we've had dogs we've had dogs that lived in a house with cats surrender to us and Mm -hmm. then whenever they go into a new home they don't like those cats Mm -hmm. so it's just it's really hard to say i mean yeah my my dog loves my we got we just adopted a giant cane corso from a a mahoney county pound and we also have a little frenchy boston mix who's Mm -hmm. 30 pounds and our our corso is 130 pounds so huge weight difference there Mm -hmm. and they are so sweet together it's adorable but I'm, but it, we, he sees other dogs and he's like, Hey, mm-hmm. not up in here. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's food motivated too. I think he would be really, really easy to train. Um, he's learning manners. Like I said, these dogs kind of have kennel energy, so they don't really know mm-hmm. it, it's going to be a little bit more intense at the shelter environment than it would be in home. Like, that's why I like always like to imagine what these guys would be like in a home because like they have to be completely different he's a doofus in like the best way possible i just think he's such a derpy boy and cracks me up they let us know when they're ready to go back in too i just had some dogs that'll play uh keep away Mm -hmm. as soon as i go to put their leash on they run away i'm like all right (laughs) i get it (laughs) it's an awesome opportunity for volunteers too um very rewarding situation like i said i've been doing this for almost 10 years at this point and there's a reason i'm still doing it Mm -hmm. it's very stressful at times you know it's sometimes it's very hard because of some of the things you see or you know dogs getting returned let downs and stuff but when you see a dog come in and just completely broken Mm -hmm. it's hard but when you see them like within the next few days and they're just run around and happy to see you and it's like you can tell this this sadly is their best situation and they're happy here they're Mm -hmm. thriving here um it feels good knowing that like you had a part in that um helping these dogs get in- adopted or you know somebody like hey i think you might want to meet this dog mm-hmm. he's great and then seeing them take him home and um very rewarding experience um i can't i can't push it enough like it's my therapy i know a lot of other volunteers kind of say the same thing mm-hmm. of it's like you know i it's a very it's a, not the easiest environment but it's not my stress. I come yeah. in, I can be having a very stressful situation with family, work, life in general, and I pull into the shelter and I take care of these dogs, and that's all my problems are out the window, and mm-hmm. I can focus on them and help them out, and it just feels really good. Um, we just had our um, 
volunteer holiday party at West Side Bowl, and we were, all we did was talk about the dogs. Mm-hmm. That's all we <laughs> talked about the whole time was just like, does he do this for you? Oh, my God, that's so funny. Or I, I have updates on so-and-so and sharing pictures and stuff. So we all really care. Mm-hmm. We love those dogs. So, yeah, I, could, I can't push it enough. You get to meet people like-minded and kind of have a nice little friend group. I feel like that's where, I like, you know, when you're turn 30s, you know, you're like, where do I meet people? Mm-hmm. Where do I – how do I get friends? You know, like high school's over, all those people have families and stuff like that. Where do I, I don't know how to meet people. I don't drink, I don't go to a bar. Church might not be the answer for me. Do something I'm interested in. Mm-hmm. Let's walk dogs. Met a lot of good, good people. They're always helping out at fundraisers. We have another fundraiser coming up in February at Birdfish, February 18th, it's a Sunday. Um, we're doing a basket raffle, portion of uh, beer sales are coming to us and everything, so always have something different going on. So. Nice, so February 18th at Birdfish and then uh, Paws Fest is March 2nd at yes. Westside Bowl. Mm-hmm. And uh, who's, uh, w- w- some of the some of the bands on there, I know I saw, I saw albums on there. So we have Daggers, Leo and the Dead Foxes, Late to Start, The Undone, Frame Shifter, Fear of Dancing, Pink Masquerade, Swamp Witch, Inosuke, Album, and the Karens. That's in no particular order. We don't have the uh, lineup times yet, um, but we will post that closer to the day of. Um, awesome bands, all different kinds of music. Um, there's not one kind of like genre there. Mm-hmm. So if there's something, if you like music, just come. Because there's going to be something there that you're going to like. It's 11 bands for 10 bucks. You can't beat it. $10. <laughs> and they're all, most are local bands. Some are from, the Karens I believe are from Pittsburgh. Um, Inose is from uh, Cleveland. Swamp Witch, uh, that's the guys from uh, Noble Creature. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they're always helping out with the, the shelter stuff too. Um, yeah, a lot of good people pulling in, different kinds of music, $10. Yeah, at West Side Bowl, which is an awesome environment as it is. Nice, and so if and, and again, if you uh, if anybody wants to you know get in touch with all about the pause, if anybody's interested in in adopting, uh, how do they get in touch? Um, you can either go through our Facebook page that's all about the pause dog rescue. Pause is with a Z, and our website is all about the pause with a Z dot com. We have our foster applications on our website and our adoption applications on there as well. Most of our adoptable dogs are on our Facebook page. Mm-hmm. It's hard to update the web. <laughs> it's Facebook's easier to manage. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Awesome. Well, Angie, thank you so much for coming down. Thank you for having me.